Hey, what is up guys? Uh, Teacher Keith here. This is my first installment in the ongoing series of gender identity. <coughs> in today's short lesson, we are talking about androgynous. Okay, so um, what does it mean to be androgynous? So let's, uh, be <coughs> let's begin to be educated on this topic. Uh, so uh, gender Androgynous is gender expression that includes a mixture of masculine and feminine characteristics can be described as androgynous. The categories of masculine and feminine in gender expression are socially constructed and rely on shared conceptions of clothing, behavior, communication, style, and other aspects of presentation. In some cultures, androgynous gender expression has been celebrated, while in others, androgynous expression has been limited or, ex or suppressed. To say that a culture or relationship is androgynous is to say that it lacks rigid gender rules or has blurred lines between gender rules. The word gender queer is often used by androgynous individuals to refer to themselves, but the term gender queer and androgynous are neither equivalent nor interchangeable. Gender queer, by virtue of its ties with, with queer culture, carries socio political connotations that androgyny does not carry. For the association with homosexuality, some androgynes may find the label gender queer inaccurate, inapplicable, or offensive. Adro androgynity is considered by some to be a viable alternative to androgen for differentiating internal psychological factors from external visual factors. An alternative to androgyny is gender role transcendence, the view that individual competence should be conceptualized on a personal basis rather than on the basis of masculinity, femininity, or androgyny. Okay, so there you have it. That is my first installment in the ongoing series of gender identity. That was about androgynous. All right, so do me a favor, like and subscribe, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.